1,200 metres out, and I've just got a little queries whether or not that'll be the case, but uh, no doubting she's got some quality. Can't fold her in the yard, Hutcher. I think, if anything, she's improved since that run at Bendigo. She's not showing any signs of, of getting warm. She's conserving energy, giving herself every chance to run the 1,200 metres, and her coat's in terrific order. Nine is a scratching the 10 Lincolnshire. Like Hera Star, debuted in Adelaide and was a stakes winner at her first career start. Her victory coming in the Dequetteville. Started 6.50. Gee, it was a good win. She, um, you know, she still looked as she probably should, like she had a bit to learn, but she levelled out really well and um, dug in for, I think, a victory that was a lot better than that point four of a length margin, and she'll only come on for that. A great chance. She's got a frame about her. She's quite a, a tall, stretchy girl, and she almost dwarfs Bold Bastille walking behind her. She's fit, she's bright and alert. She looks ready to go. 11, Torrenes has been behind Bold Bastille in both her career runs. The margin was almost halved at Bendigo. That it was, um, and she got going late, and just that race got away from her. I think 1,200, probably doesn't want to give away too much ground. It just depends where she settles. We know she can finish off strong as she did there. Neat filly, fitting well, coping well with her first racing preparation. Coat looks great. 12, Cosmic Ride, second career start. The first was the stakes placing in the Without Fear in Adelaide. Yeah, I like that performance. That was behind Pure Aqua. There was some money around. It worked well leading in and delivered on race day. Nothing wrong with that performance. It rated well. She's, uh, she's going to be competitive. Neat, compact, uh, almost petite filly, but very bright, engaged and alert. 13, Symphony of Colour. She was victorious on debut at Tarang. Yeah, that race rated well. And, you know, Damien Lane made the, the trip down the, to the course to, to ride this horse, and that might just speak volumes about what his impression of her was. So she's $26. I think you could do a lot worse. No negatives in the yard. She's another one that's engaged. She's fit. She's bright and alert. Coat's in really good, good shape. Second of the Rosemont runners, the 14, Mrs Archibald, was placed behind Rich Doddy at her second start. And she's the one that could probably apply a little bit of pressure as well in terms of tempo in the race. It's fast, and uh, she's drawn uh, a low barrier as well in gate four. In fact, immediately to the outside of uh, the favourite. So um, she'll go forward, run well. I didn't see any excuses at either run, but she's thereabouts. She's very fit and she looks like she's keen to get on with that real short course style of horse. 15, Gelhorn was placed behind Kadeem at Lakeside at her first career start. The winner of that, Kadeem, was third favourite for the Breeders earlier today in Adelaide. Yeah, and that, that race is obviously up on the back of that. It's rated pretty well and plenty of happy to respect that form line. I am too. Really nice style of horse. I think in time it's probably going to get out over further, but prevent, presents well second day at the races. 16, Coastal Abbey has bumped into two good ones at Bendigo in her career to date. Including Bold Bastille. Six lengths to make up there. Probably an excuse. Nice, uh, nice filly, but I wasn't entertaining today. From a yard point of view, fit and well, no negatives. Quay Quay in 2020, finance tycoon defeating literary magnate and scissor step in 2021. King's consort two years ago defeating the Tasmanian Ballo Bow and Volanda, as mentioned. She's all shenanigans, came out of the Bendigo Gold Rush last year. That's the pathway by which Bold Bastille comes and is the on-top selection for Hutch. What say you, Warren, ahead of the showdown? Yeah, I'll swim with Hutch here. Look, I, I liked Lincolnshire also. She's a very different style of horse to Bold Bastille. Got a lot more frame and athleticism about her. She looked keen to get on with it, but I thought, if anything, Bold Bastille, which you wouldn't expect to be improving at this stage of the campaign, but paraded even a touch better than she did at Bendigo. Very composed, giving herself every chance to run the 1,200. Pick of the yard for me, number eight, Bold best deal. I've got her on top Warren but I wouldn't back her at the price. I think she's uh, she's one to probably risk there. There's others that do make some appeal. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it's an interesting race. There's no doubt she's got the runs on the board. Bold Bastille and one of her co-trainers is JD Hayes. JD Hayes joins us. Bold Bastille looking to give the stable yet another victory in the Voba showdown. How is she managing to stay afloat this deep into the prep? Yeah, no problem. Uh, she's a very relaxed horse at home. She's been really enjoying the day yards out uh, at Lindsay Park Yaroa, so very happy with her coming here today. There's probably questions going back a couple of months ago regarding her capabilities of seeing out a, a strong 1,200. What's given you confidence as things have gone along that this is a logical option? Uh, I, I really do feel like she'll run a nice 1,200. Um, all her starts for and she's been strong through the line, ears pricks, so I haven't got to the bottom of her. So hopefully I'm right. Um, I'll be, we'll uh, be better versed to answer that question in about 10 minutes' time, but I'm um, really happy with her going into it, and I think she'll run a strong 12. Drilling deeper beyond 
simply winning, where do you see her maturing and developing from run to run through the campaign? Uh, she's just held her condition beautifully. Um, we don't really do much at home. She's a very fast, fast horse, so just ticking over, keeping her happy, and she's been able to hold her condition beautifully. Good luck. Thank you. Absolutely, the race. What a race. Uh, a lot of youngsters here. Amazing prize money on offer, isn't it, uh, for these gallopers, uh, obviously, with the Vobus Platinum or Vobus Scheme. Great incentive. And Bold Bastille at the head of the market. She's been uh, supremely, supremely placed up until this point. And the camp are pretty positive in terms of her ability to see out the 1200. I must admit, visually, when I watched that race at Benninger, I thought, well, she was very good late, she was strong, but sort of dissect uh, the times through the race. It, she, she did have her own way, but she wasn't exactly stopping either. So it, I, I just think she gets a bit more pressure here. So that's not to say that she doesn't relax in that sort of role, Nigel. And like, I think you've got to use her asset. Her asset is her speed. But I like the way that she did relax in that role last time out, quick and beautifully. So she's still the benchmark and what they have to be. That she is. So we get via the Million Dollar Showdown here and then we look forward to the two group ones to come in Adelaide with the Australasian Oaks and also the Robert Sangster. We've had some pre-parade footage make its way via Morpherville and some of the high-class fillies and mares that have now made their way on course. Here is Estriella. What a boom she has on her and rightly so off her recent performances here in the Kevin Hayes, the English Sprint, and then most recently that win in the Sunlight Classic. We know the form that the Kieran Ma stable have shown in recent carnivals in Adelaide. Zapateo, well, she's bringing Group 1 form lines to the race after some recent high-end performances, including breaking through at Group 1 level last start in the Galaxy. And Stretton Angel, well, her best for Philip Stokes is clearly good enough. We know the record that the three-year-old fillies have had in these races in recent seasons, and she's, of course, coming off a last start placing in the Redelva. Prior to that, she was fourth to Estriella in the Sunlight Classic. So very much looking forward to what's ahead of us across the remainder of this afternoon with two Group 1s to start what's going to be a fantastic month of racing in South Australia to look forward to and this Million Dollar Showdown. And it continues tomorrow, Hutch, with Champions Day to look forward to in Hong Kong. Yes, we've got a number of great clashes there, in particular the mile between uh, Golden 60, Galaxy Patch, and the Romantic Warrior, Dubai on and Prognosis uh, in the QE2. So that's all to come. In the meantime, we've got a million dollars here. Million dollar race for the uh, the Vobus Platinum Showdown. Good race every year. This year's no exception. Bold Bastille will jump the favourite. There's money for her late, but she's back into even money. Along Daniel Moore with a black distinguishing Daniel cap. Moore, Old Bastille, a winner of four from five, has been positioned the favourite. Here's Will Council about to come along, Dean Yendel, yeah, mate, filling the I stalls. This is Archibald here, number 14, who was placed here on the uh, Caulfield Heath track recently. Will Council five, forward. Five. Uh, Stormberg about to join five. them as the big field continues Declan to load Bates, away. Mate, Cosmic Ride comes along now. Seven. So Stanley Express, $17. This horse opened up into $8 now. Clear third elect. Bold Bastille to 205. Now Bold Bastille's broken through the front of the stalls here. Not a lot of harm done. Not a lot of harm done. Luke Curry's been able to uh, rein her in pretty quickly. She's probably gone about 100 metres. So the clerk of the course has gathered her in very quickly. So it doesn't look as though a lot of harm's been done. She's barely gone 100 metres. And number 11, Tora Ness, is rideless out behind the stalls as well. So a couple of these horses just a little bit fizzed up. So we await on uh, yeah. further news. Hey, um, keep in the right there. Tora Ness in the meantime is being placed forward rideless, so no problems with her. Now uh, Centre Square is about to uh, come forwards. Centre Square loading up. Now Bold Bastille's back behind the stalls. I'll obviously just uh, run the rule uh, over this uh, runner. News from Scales coming through. OK, thank you. Uh, heavy on Scales. Uh, Bold Bastille being vetted after being uh, fractious uh, in the gates. So some nervous uh, times here. 
plenty of owners uh, down on the fence here with high hopes for their uh, young horses running for a big prize. Now Gellhorn is about to load forwards and we... Now yeah, we're just waiting on news. We're just waiting on some news. I think you'll find this horse is coming out. Yes, Luke Curry is dismounted. So uh, we'll have this confirmed in a moment, but it looks as though the favourite is going to be a late scratching out of the showdown. We'll get that confirmed. 356 on Vets Advice. Bold Bastille is a late scratching at 356 on Vets Advice. So it's all to play for now. Lincolnshire, the new favourite. Gates are back and they're racing in the showdown. And missing the start of Shade was Coastal Abbey on the inside. Beginning well over on the inside, Mrs. Archibald from Cosmic Ride and Symphony of Colour in the early strides from Link View. They were followed next in the field by getting up on the fence, Coastal Abbey. Out deeper on the track as well as Lincolnshire on the improved. War Council in about seventh position from Centre Square and Torrenes. A length and a half away then on the inside is indefinite. Well back is Gellhorn in company with Stormberg and the well-supported Stanley Express is last. Lincolnshire striding up three wide at the 600 metres to Perch outside of Mrs. Archibald and Symphony of Colour between them. A length and a quarter away then on the inner coastal abbey from Linkview and Cosmic Ride. Further back in the field, War Council, Centre Square. Torrenes a long way back and Stanley Express has got past a few. Into the straight, Mrs. Archibald with Symphony of Colour at the 250. Lincoln Shearers driving up on the outside of it and they were followed by Coastal Abbey, Linkview and Stormberg. Lincoln Shear and Symphony of Colour. Stride for stride with Symphony of Colour kicking at the 100 metres and Stanley Express from the back, flying home well supported, and they've landed it. Stanley Express has got up to win from Symphony of Colour. Photo third, Stormberg, Lincolnshire got tired. A few others there, indefinite, not beaten far with War Council and Gellhorn. They were followed next by Coastal Abbey, Mrs. Archibald, Cosmic Ride, Link View, Torrenes, and Centre Square. And Bold Bastille has been a late scratching at the stalls at 3.56.